Hello, everybody. Drasco here from 10knorm.com, where my main mission is to help heart-centered entrepreneurs who know all the business strategies normalize their next 10K month, their next 10K week, their next 10K day, uh, and do so by mastering what's between their ears. And for today's episode, we have a Real Talk segment where I bring in a heart-centered entrepreneur who isn't seeing the consistent, stable growth in their business and then live on the call, I get to help them break down one specific aspect most overlooked in business strategy, which is that of the inner aspect. And uh, on today's episode, we have Arnitha Webb, who is an advocate for international travel and living. Uh, as an international insurance expert, she launched Arnitha Webb Corp to provide products and services that cater to digital nomads and entrepreneurs that are entering the vast world of online business. Uh, with this, she also has a flagship coaching program, which is Redesign Your Life to Move Abroad. And it is one of a kind in helping professionals transition 100% remote uh, and go abroad without any of the money worries. So, Anitha, thank you very much for coming on. How are you doing today? Thank you. I am, I'm, I'm excited. We're at the top of the year of 2022. Um, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what the year is going to unfold. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Like new year, new me, like that's always, you know, and I'm not sure if you know my, uh, history, but like I owned a brick and mortar weight loss center for, uh, 10 years. So yeah, January was always yeah. you know, a, a time of like new start. So yeah, very appropriate yeah. for you to, uh, mention that. So yeah. yeah, I'd love for you to dive more into your story. And I know we spoke a little bit, uh, pre-recording that, you know, you seem to have shifted with the new year, like you're kind of moving the business in a new direction. So I'd love to know, you know, how you got into doing what you're doing and kind of where you're shifting towards right now. So floor is yours for all of that. Okay. Well, I actually, how I got into this, you know, before the pandemic hit, I had already reached the point, I come from the brick and mortar business world as well. And I had already reached the point of what I called hitting reset. You know, when you just look at everything about your life, about your desires, about your passions, about what you want, how you're affecting the world. And I had already pressed reset. And when I mean I, I pressed reset, I mean, I took the time to do all the personal work, you know, all the self-reflection and, you know, just everything. And I made a colossal decision, sold my house, moved abroad, like made major moves. And I formed a business at that time called uh, World Citizens Academy. And it was something that was kind of birthed out of a brick and mortar learning center that I used to own. Then I was a in-classroom teacher in New York City. And I did an elective called World Citizen. So it was something that's sort of a program that migrated with me over the years. And I turned it into a business. And um, right before the pandemic hit, I had you know, been living abroad and had groups scheduled to come from the US, student groups scheduled to come from the US to Barcelona, Switzerland, and Italy. And I was connecting them with college campuses, connecting them with employers, intr introducing them to the whole world of global, global workplace, you know, and the pandemic hit. And so everything, basically, my business collapsed because it was premised on experiential learning. It was premised on that travel component. It had the pre-work, but it was like, no, we're getting on a plane and going somewhere, <laughs> right? And, and the pandemic said, no, you're not. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit hard uh, you know, with, with that, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if, you, and if you remember when it first hit, it was just like quarantine, right? Everybody yeah. just I'll travel to the grocery store, but that's a yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Exactly. Exactly. And stand in line. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And hope there's toilet tissue. Right. So, yeah, it was that. And so um, all of that, you know, I spent like the next year, 2020, doing refunds, doing refunds and 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 kind of finding trying to find my footing. And um, that's when I launched. Um, redesigning your life to move abroad, the coaching program. And so for the last couple of years, I've been 
working, you know, doing the international insurance, still sort of in that vein of, of where, you know, that's me. <laughs> I'm all about the international anything, right? So I'm still working in that vein, but how can I put it? Um, still kind of what I've recently come to realize, kind of still pissed that like, what happened to my my World Citizens Academy and all my groups coming abroad and, you know. Um, so anyway, long story short, I get to, we're at 2022. And the business has been inconsistent. The business has been sort of like some great months, um, some like months that kind of like fizzle and level off. I get most of my clients word of mouth. Um, I can wear a lot of hats. I used to um, have a program called the Life Planning Program that was actually bought by um, a state agency, a federal agency. I've won contracts with it. So I understand the, the transition um, sector, the, the change management sector of, of getting people, of helping people transition into new, new careers and new new you know, um, periods of their life. But I, I think, I think, I think the reason why I've had inconsistent months is because it wasn't what I put together when I hit reset. It was, it was a secondary business to the, because World Citizens Academy went flat. And I think that it's, you know, because I put, I, I designed something that was not just 100% me, but 200% me. And now I was kind of falling back on the, the, the skill sets that I knew, but I was kind of forced to. It, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's why I have kind of like been in and out um, with these inconsistencies. And inside of the redesigning your life um, to move abroad program, when you're working with people who are, you know, trying to transition, you know, a lot of them was, a lot of my clients was forced into doing remote work. And by being forced into doing remote work, at now they're like, well, heck, I don't really want to go back to the office 24 seven. I don't mind a hybrid, but I don't want to do it 24 seven. Or now I want to keep the hands on, um, you know, with my taking care of my parents or my kids or what have you. And they want to really embrace this remote lifestyle, like in a real way now, because, you know, it's, it's happened. Um, and so it also has, it made me throw in a component into the coaching program that I didn't see in the beginning of it. And that is helping them also navigate the education of their kids if they're moving abroad, if they're moving outside of the US or if they you know, are gonna homeschool, like how to really navigate that. I'm a trained educator. So I'm like, okay, I can hit that component and put, that mo put modules in for that, not a problem. But I feel disjointed in that I'm wearing so many hats within the coaching program. It's um, um, educational consultant. Um, the, the, the travel expert and the, the insurance expert, I'm the this, I'm the, and I'm like, how many hats am I wearing inside this coaching program? I'm, I'm, I've got myself divided up into 10 people, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's, it gets some, some days I'm exhausted if I have a lot of, um, a lot of calls. Cause as you know, when you're working with people, especially when you are committed, you're giving it's coming, it's the energy is pouring out of you. And sometimes, you know, afterwards you're like, whew, I just need the couch and a cup of tea, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I, I, being at the top of 2022, I put out a video at the top of the year and I, I do a lot of things organically where I may have a direction, but then I let, whatever's supposed to come out, come out. And in this video that I put out, I was talking about trusting yourself. 
turns out, I'm thinking I'm putting a video up on social, just social media, you know, like put some, right. <laughs> and I was really speaking to myself, you know, and that's where the pre-conversation we had when I said, wow, in the last couple of days, I've made some major decisions because I had to think to myself, are you trusting yourself, Arnitha? You, you already know you feel like you're wearing too many hats in your own program that you created. You're wearing too many hats. So you need to take a step back and address that and see, you know, if, if need be, go back to the drawing board of where you were when you press reset and make sure you are doing what you want to do, what you should be doing and you are, you know, completely in line with your values, basically. And so I've decided in my major decisions that I am going to focus on the student aspect of my coaching. I'm gonna focus on the student aspect of it. So um, what that looks like going forward is, is very different from how I, I managed the coaching last year. I'm focusing on um, the students and I, I provide um, special education services. So I have clients four days a week, <laughs> you know, that came out of the coaching, you know, where I'm actually working with their kids too. Um, I'm gonna keep that component, but I'm also going to kind of go back to the drawing board on my WCA program that I, love wholeheartedly like it is me through and through you know um and I'm going to trust myself I'm going to trust myself that what when I pressed reset what I was focusing on is really what I'm supposed to be focusing on Yes, I pivoted because of the pandemic, but you don't have to pivot so far that you don't recognize yourself. That absolutely makes sense. And I could see the shift from like where I was, the circumstances changed. I had to change with the circumstances. Oh, that didn't really work. And was like a complete disaster in terms of how I was living now, like, we're not going to have any more of that. I need to go back. So that all sounds great to me. It seems like you actually have a good handle on where you're at here. You're clearly quite self-aware. So then where are you at now? Like, what is the issue right now? The issue right now is number one, I don't want to, um, I don't want to look flighty. You know what I mean? Like how I communicate this shift is, is where I'm at. Um, how, what does this shift look like? How is it packaged? And how do I communicate it? Because it's really not, I'm not stopping what I'm doing and doing something completely new. I'm just taking some stuff out that I need to take out that I don't need to let somebody else do. <laughs> Let somebody else do, you know? <laughs> I'm not the answer to everything. Let somebody else do. Um, I'm, not, I'm not doing something new, but if I don't communicate it right, it's going to appear new because the, the clients that I have whose actual students that I'm working with every week came out of the redesigning your life. I didn't advertise myself out to, to, to work with students directly. You see, it came because they, the parents were already my client. And because they're already my client and they also have this issue and I'm qualified for that issue, they were like, can you, can you assess my kid? Can you do this with my kid? And then next thing you know, it's like, I want them to work with you. And so I started accumulating a virtual class of kids. And I'm like, I didn't even advertise that. I don't even advertise that. Right, it's like a but happy I, accident, right? It's a, yeah, it's a happy, I never thought about putting it that way. <laughs> it's a happy accident. It's a happy accident, exactly. And so, um, 
yeah, it's a happy accident. Um, so how I package my services to, to stay in that vein and to bring in the World Citizens Academy component to it is very important to me because I don't want to come across like, huh, what's she doing now? Got it. So it's like to avoid that confusion in the marketplace, right? Like you don't want to dilute the message just like you've diluted all of the, the actions for it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So that makes sense. And I think there is a, you know, marketing skill component of that. Um, but I think you're, you're kind of aware of it, right? Like you, you are aware that the messaging matters. You're aware that, you know, if I'm going to niche down, you know, it has to be abundantly clear so that I can discern and I don't get into these sentiments later on because then I'll just get into the same issue again. So, That's right. Right. Okay. So then kind of the same follow-up question as I had previously, like, you have pretty good clarity with regards to what seems to be the next step. So what then is the actual issue? What then is the actual issue? Um, the communicate, just, 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 um, you know, because this is, this is, I've made this decision literally in the last week literally in the last week. So decision made, I'm not struggling with the decision. It's again, you know, and, and now, and I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. It's like, I have, I have opened up businesses. I own an insurance agency. I've owned a learning since, you know, so I think we always think of that big, we look at things from a 10 foot view, right? <laughs> You know, I'm not looking at things like, you know, me. I'm looking at it like, how does it look? How does it feel? How does it, how is it presented? Um, what's the, you know, what's the, the, the customer journey, you know, mm -hmm. like now it's just a matter of wrapping my mind around that. Once I can kind of get the, the, the flow chart in my head, you know, and, and kind of see it, then I think I can, you know, which is what I started working on today, actually. I was like, okay, I got to visualize this out, you know, okay. take so, out all that other stuff and niche down, like you said, to what this is really going to be about. Right. So th this doesn't sound to me like it's actually like a skill gap, right? Like you have the skill to be able to narrow this down and actually mm -hmm. like execute on it. Mm -hmm. Like I, mm -hmm. I know what I need to do. It's just now a matter of doing it because I have the clarity from the decision. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're okay with it, if we were to zoom out a little bit more, right? Because in all honesty, it's like, there's not really much for me to do here, <laughs> right? Like you, you seem to have it under control and that's cool. Like I, I actually have no issues with that at all. It, it's good to see because the reason I was asking those questions was just to discern like, okay, is this a skill issue? Is this like, I'm missing a trait? Is this like, I don't believe it can happen this way. Mm. They, they actually don't seem to be there. Okay. Uh -uh. So if you were to look at your business from a less granular perspective and more zoomed out, right? So we're looking at, okay, this is the beginning of 2022. I made these, I don't want to call them mistakes because they were actually just pivoted out of necessities. And mm -hmm. it, you know, it got me to here. I'm now clear because I know what I don't want. So I know what I do want. I'm going to make the shifts and I'm going to set the stage for it because even the whole communication bit, I'm like, I just met you and I kind of understand what you're talking about, right? So it's like, I, I don't necessarily see that it's a communication issue right? So if you're looking at your business from a zoomed out perspective in terms of like, you know, this time 2023, where does it want to be? Is your vision that clear or are there any things that are coming up when you begin to look at your business from that zoomed out perspective? Um, from a zoomed out perspective, um, it's a matter of how fast I, I, I believe is how fast I want it to grow. Okay. Because um, there's what I can do, me, myself, and I. And then after that, 
it's being able to duplicate me. So do I want to, how fast do I want it to grow? Do I just want it to stay, you know, where I'm doing everything for like, you know, 12 months, 18 months, how long before I get to that point where I start, you know, developing a training program so that I can duplicate myself, you know? Um, and and I way, don't, have you done that before in your other businesses? Like you've duplicated yes. yourself successfully, hired yes. a team, managed a team, all those yes. things. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So um, for this, that's that's that would be my next step. How how quickly? And probably I probably wouldn't go to that phase until a solid um, school year, a solid you know nine month cycle, nine ten month cycle um, you know, then, then go to that point, probably. Um, so that's that, you know, I, the way I'm looking at it from a, from a, um, overview is two areas. It's the sets area, it's the international program area, the international program area. I think, um, I'm at the point now after two years into this daggone pandemic that is, as long as I know what I want to do with the program, the rest is really going to unfold and I'm just going to adapt. I'm just going to adapt <laughs> to, <laughs> to how we navigate it. You know, I'm an, I'm a, I'm an insurance broker. I'm an international insurance broker. So my, my, my finger is on the pulse of what's happening in the travel arena anyway. And so whatever the need is and however we have to navigate it, if I want to, you know, you know, uh, sponsor a group somewhere or do something with a group. That's just what I'll do. And I'm just not going to fight it. I'm not waiting for nothing. It's no such thing as wait till I go back to normal. Ah, no, it, it normal is today. <laughs> yep. That makes sense. Okay. So then looking at it a different way, cause, and what I'm hearing here is like, okay, I, my main concern is like, how quickly do I want to grow? Because there's so much uncertainty with regards to like what's going to happen with travel. So like if I grow too quickly and then circumstances change, I'll be kind of in the same position again. So like, yeah. is that accurate? So just, yeah. So I'm just, okay. so I'm not going to push it to grow too fast. I'm going to, you know, let it unfold, I guess, more naturally. Okay. You know? Got it. And in terms of your own personal vision of like, you know, I still want to have the ideal business in 12 months, regardless of what the circumstances are, mm -hmm. what would be your personal vision for the business? My um, personal vision for the business is no matter what, within the next 12 months to have um, the, the virtual components of the program, which is really the set services, clearly functioning and, and working and allowing me to, to make a difference in these families' lives, in these students' lives, um, and also allowing me to live outside of the U.S. because I'm moving this year. <laughs> okay, very cool. So it sounds to me also like those are skills you already have as well. I right? do. Like you know I how do. to structure a program. Obviously, you know how to navigate, you know, moving wherever it is you need to do. So it doesn't seem like there's much that's kind of stopping you in terms of being able to achieve that in the next 12 months. The only, you know, I think I, if you would have asked me that last week, two weeks ago, the answer would have been completely different because, but because I made the decision to just stop dividing myself up into so many pieces and trying to be everything inside of this coaching program, um, it's almost like a house came off of me. It's like, I feel lighter and I don't have to figure out how to do all of these things and keep in, and, and, and it's too much. It was too much. Trust me. Yeah. I, I can definitely, uh, relate to that. So I, I yeah, yeah, I'm like yeah. helping people start online businesses. I'm doing, 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 uh, training them on the, on the platforms and, oh my God, it's, it's daunting. So I feel like I feel lighter. I feel lighter 
And so now it's just a matter of, okay, Arnitha, you've, you've cleared off the table. You know, you just decided you're going to move all this other stuff out of the way. Now just do it and um, just do it and, and make it and, and communicate that to people. I guess that's why I go back to the communication part because I have to communicate this shift, this whatever I'm doing. And, you know, and then by the summer, you know, I should be ready to move myself. And um, I have moved before. I'm a professional mover, I guess. Um, you know, I'm telling, helping other people move. I know how to do it. And um, I'm just take it from there. But I do, if you would ask me that, like a, probably when I made this appointment, I was, <laughs> I was like yeah. a wet rag. <laughs> and, and clarity is powerful. Like it, it, it does, you know, clear up the, the path. So in that, because you mentioned a communication a bunch of times, you mentioned a clarity a bunch of times. So that potentially could be something to explore as well. What was your thought process going into saying yes to all of these other responsibilities? because I can and I had to you know it's a hard thing you know when you go into business you 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 hear the advice about you know doing the one thing um it's it's hard for people who can do a lot of things you know I've been a software trainer in corporate America I've had, I've worked for very large companies that have sent me all around the world doing trainings for them. I've, I've had my own business where I've actually won government contracts. I've done this, I've done that. And I think the problem is just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. All of that, I think I had to just, just say to myself once and for all, all of that is great experience. All of that comes into play when it's supposed to. But that those things that I was doing at those times in my life was for those times. Every, you know, it's a time and a season for things. And that's what I was supposed to be doing then. But it's not what I'm supposed to be doing going forward. Right. It worked then, but it's not the part that's going to move you forward. It's exactly. Now. I'm it. going in this. It's, yeah, it's not. It's just not. It's not going to work. And so I had to I had to get tired of hitting the brick wall. And I had to get tired of like, why, you know, oh, I got three, four new clients and now I got no new clients this month and knowing and, and, and here's another thing I think too, that was hard for me. Every business venture or whatever has not been easy, but has kind of come a little easy. And this last two years has been a struggle. And I'm like, what is it? And it's, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not doing it in the right way. And you know, sometimes we don't want to, you know, say, girl, you messed up. Well, you know. <laughs> you right. Know? And it seems like it was the saying yes, because it's like, I, I didn't have a choice because the pandemic was there. I just kind of had to say yes, because I'm panicking. Right. So I, I'm I saying yes to, say to everything. It. Yeah. So does that show up in other areas of your life as well? Or it just kind of. Nope. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> I laugh, I laugh because even my family is like, that is not you. <laughs> no, so, so yeah, it's like, it's like a, it's, it, that's why things was off. Cause I'm like, what am I doing? You know, like what's going on? But I'm telling you, it's, it's um that, my own words came back and echoed in my head and bit me just doing that video going about trusting yourself. And I was just like, Arnitha, are you doing that? You telling other people they are, but are you real? Like you need to check yourself. <laughs> that is really powerful. Cause it, it's so <laughs> seldom. Does it actually like, 
it, it, you know how it's like you always are able to see other people's problems, but then so seldom do we have that ego check of like, well, hold on, I'm actually the one doing, you know, the the, the same thing as well, right? So the fact yep. that you have the, and kind of what I said at the beginning, like you have this strong sense of self-awareness that allows you to reflect back in that way, I think is super powerful is actually one of the main things I, I help like teach people in like the actual programming that I do, which is like, how do I self-coach my way? Right. And oftentimes yeah. it's that very thing of everything in to some degree is a projection. So when it's reflected back, it's actually on us to observe and then make a choice about it. That of course is easier said than done. And that's why we have, you know, coaches and people we hire to be that mirror but it's certainly a skill that that we can you know do ourselves. So mm-hmm. you know that mm-hmm. that I think is is super powerful, and the fact that you're able to catch that is, is such an important element in the growth mm-hmm. and not getting in your own way with regards to the business. So kudos to you for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it'll make you sit down, <laughs> especially if you're standing. Then it's like, yep, now <laughs> we, we got to take a step back here. It's fine, so. Yeah, 100% uh, agree with you on that one. So in that case, because honestly, uh, this doesn't actually happen often. So, you know, it's good to be number one, but usually, and this could have been like very much what you said, like if I had done this, what I initially booked it, we might have gotten into that clarity conversation. But now that it's there and it's fresh, you know, there's not much dive into because you had that element Mm -hmm. of clarity. So just playing more along the the devil's advocate um, Mm -hmm. aspect here, you know, if you had to triple your business for 2022, what comes up for you? If I had to triple it for 2022, I would duplicate myself faster. I would have someone shadow me um, and duplicate myself faster. And so that, yeah, we could take on more clients for sure. That's what I would do. Perfect. And that I think comes down to the whole, if I'm niching down and know how to communicate that piece, then that becomes the multiplicative aspect that I have to do. Okay. Yeah. And is that something that resonates with you to do it? Um, Not before, not before the fall. Not before the fall. No. Mm -mm. Because, yeah, there's, there's, um, before I do that point, I want to make sure all the systems that I would want to see in place, I would want to have um, every bit of, you know, you can never cover everything, all the incidents that that, that could occur. But I would want to be at a certain point throughout the journey of the business first. Yeah, I would making definitely... sure things are reliable first before yeah. you actually go forward because yes. then they have a bigger risk of blowing themselves up. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah, I would, I, would, I would wait until, and this, and also I, I would also be waiting until after my own move is done because I wouldn't even want to have to be distracted. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of where I was getting that too, because oftentimes the, the reason I bring this up is our brain will default to like, a, well, I just want more. Like now that I know what I want, like, let's just blow this thing up. This is like as mm-hmm. much as I want. But the reality is, is like we oftentimes neglect, well, what kind of life do I actually want to lead? Like if I want to have a peaceful move, not stressing over having to take 10 sales call a day is probably a good thing. Right. And, and I think we oftentimes let our ego be like no but just because this is available and it's an opportunity i should take it no like you should just actually move towards what kind of life you actually want and let your business fuel that right yeah 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 so i yeah you (laughs) i feel like you're reading my mind exactly (laughs) yeah no exactly i just i wouldn't want the the distraction it would be more important for me to be getting the outcomes that I'm looking for with the kids. It would be more important for me for to have the systems in place, the legalities um, um, ironed out, um, all, all of that, and then go to that phase two when I'm in my new space. And yeah, 
Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. And again, I was just literally just asking these to see, like, are there any holes that I see with regards to clients that I work with both on the business side and on yeah. the personal side? And awesome. honestly, I, I think you're in a very good spot. Like, I, I it, it doesn't happen that Thank often, you. but I think you're in a very solid spot in terms of clarity, which is always a superpower, mm-hmm. right? I think you're in a solid spot in terms of skill set. I think with regards to like the traits that you seem mm-hmm. to embody around it, mm-hmm. seems to work. So like I, <laughs> I love where you're at, honestly, like that, that's all <laughs> I can, uh, that's all I can really provide for you. So sorry that this didn't, you know, wasn't an earth shattering, uh, oh, I didn't realize it this way, but you know what? That's the whole segment of real talk, which is whatever yeah. comes up on here comes up. So yeah. that's, that's totally cool. No, I- Actually, you, when you said it was, uh, what did you say? It was a happy mistake. Happy accident. Yes. A happy accident. Oh, I kind of remember that. That's that's a shift. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a shift in perspective. That's a happy yeah. accident. I yeah, because like oftentimes, like, we'll you know, we'll remember things that went bad, but we so often neglect to be grateful of like the things that actually just yeah. worked out, or at times we don't blow ourselves up. Yeah. So, yeah. I went through a whole pandemic and yeah. even though my business was shut down, I'm still okay moving forward. Like we need to take a step back and celebrate that. Like that, that is not a small thing when so many businesses actually like closed down and, you yeah. know, whole other things that, you know, went yeah. along with it. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, if that's your main takeaway from today, happy yeah. accidents is yeah. a good spot to be in. Yeah. It's, it shifts it from a, a negative emotion, you know, that's good. That's yeah. good because you have a lot to be grateful about. Like you have, like yeah. I said, great clarity, great skill set. People want to work with you. Like th- these are all things to uh, celebrate, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And thank <laughs> you for, uh, you know, agreeing to do this and, and rolling the dice with it. So I'm, uh, I'm happy that you were able to get that out of it. So yeah, in that case, I mean, if this feels complete for you, I'm more than happy to kind of close it off. So mm-hmm. does this feel complete or do you feel like there's something left outstanding? Um, in terms of consistency, because your, your focus is to, to help people really have that consistency, like the 10 K norm, like, like where you're not fluctuating. What do you think is the the greatest if, if if it's one thing if it's one thing you would advise someone to do to have that type of continuity what would that thing that you would tell them to do well okay so i, I know it's kind of a non-answer but it, i would say it depends uh and it depends on the reason that we spoke about just a moment ago which is like you know so oftentimes we default to like I just need to do more stuff. I need to do more outreach. I need to do more marketing. I need to do more videos, but that not might not be getting you closer to what you want. Right. So it's like, okay, if I want consistency in my revenue, there's multiple different ways to actually get that. So it's like, how am I thinking of it? Because new clients is only one aspect of that. Right. That's true. There, like you can have, either people pay you more, you can have more people buy your stuff, or you can have people buy your stuff more often. Right. Right. So it's that combination. And the hardest of those is actually getting more clients, right? You got to sell them, you got to attract them, you got to schedule them, you got to onboard them. Like that is in some ways the most expensive aspect. Yeah. So from that vantage point, what, like, where has most of your focus been? Well, prior to, to this decision, it would, it was definitely in my, especially in the last few months in my product area. Um, I have three for sale eBooks and it was in the um, I also was was really gearing up to do to be more consistent in my um, social media, and you know, you know, oh, put out more, do more videos. Da, 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 da. Um, that's where I was putting my focus. But, and it's not to say that you don't need social media because you do, but with this shift. Um, 
since I've made the decision, I haven't posted anything because it's more important for me to be clear about what I'm posting and to be communicating, that's that word again, and to communicate what I wanna communicate and to have, have where I want them to go, like the call to action, like have where I want them to go, have all that done so that it, you know, I'm not just um, playing, you know. Um, but I do know that it's definitely going to be a shift in, in my, because I wear a different hat when I'm in this other headspace. And so I know I won't feel that angst that I think coaches and people with online courses and whatever, there's sort of this angst going on, I think, in the marketplace, you know, where you got to do 50 things that are hardly any of them are IPAs, income producing, but you got to do them because somebody's telling you you got to do them, right? Um, so, and just I, to kind of pause you right there, because that, like, it kind of sounds like the same sentiment that we spoke about earlier was like, I'm just saying yes to the things I should be doing. People are asking me to teach their kids. I can do that. So I'll say yes. People are asking me to do this other kind of non-related business. I'll say yes to that. People are saying I should post on social media. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Like there's very, it, it's almost like you need to be forced into your own discernment and trust as opposed to owning that initially and then just doing that and trusting yeah. that that's what you're going to do. And that, that was my struggle. And I think that's why with this whole new year message about trusting yourself, I think that's why it hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Be because you asked me earlier about, um, well, uh, we talked uh, like other things that I've done. I felt that if I can say it in my own way, I did on my terms. I did it the, the way I wanted to do it. And since the pandemic and, and, and how I was shifting things, you're right. I was saying yes to way too much to everything and doing it not on my terms, doing it because somewhere someone is asking for something or I'm seeing where this is expected of me or, or, or what have you. And that's why I felt like I was split into so many pieces. Right. And that is, kind of sounds like you're outsourcing trust, right? Like yeah. the, the externals know what's no right. more than me. Yeah. So no, they know I'll what's just, right. So I'll just follow them. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So going back to your original question, I'm like, well, how do I stabilize the income? I, I think that's really where you need to start. It's like, okay, I know my business, I know at best, where are the fluctuations? Am I hemorrhaging a lot of my time doing things, again, trusting the externals, or am I focused on serving my people in the way that I want to serve them with more of the same people that are gonna get the results that I know I can deliver the best and I can show up the best in, mm -hmm. right? I think when you have that answer, then it's a lot clearer, or you have the foundation to have a clear answer. I'm like, okay, do I need to charge more? Do I need to have a continuity program? Do I need to have some sort of referral systems in place? You know, the, that, like then it opens up the discussion to be more fruitful, but they're all irrelevant if you don't trust yourself, right? Like if I told you, yeah, you know, you should probably just go on five lives a day for like 30 days straight and you ended up doing that, but that got you nowhere. Like, then, you know, what? like why, why, why would you trust me if that has nothing to do with your business? Mm -hmm. So does that kind of resonate mm -hmm. with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So knowing yeah. that and knowing, so if you could not trust yourself, meaning you had absolute trust in yourself, you couldn't think a thought that is not trustworthy of yourself. How would you answer the question of consistent income? If I couldn't trust myself, how would I? <laughs> if you could not, not trust yourself. Like I, I couldn't think a thought that makes me doubt myself. If I couldn't think a thought that would make me doubt myself, then how would I create consistent income? Correct. Like how would you, without doubt, without the ability to have doubt, how would you answer the question, how do I stabilize my own income? Do what I know how to do. Which is what? Which is... which is when I 
when I work in my space, when I have that hat on, that, 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 um, I don't care if I'm working with a kid with reading or if I'm working with a college person on careers, I am so confident and so in my zone that you can't, you, nobody on the earth can tell me a single thing because I know what I'm talking about. And what I don't know, I, I know, I know, I know I, that that person that I'm working with has 200% of me. So I'm giving them everything I got when I'm in that space. I give them everything I got. Like full on presence. Full on. Yeah. Full on. Um, yeah. Like, in 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 Yeah. So really then it comes down to how do I manufacture more opportunities to be fully present with more people that are my people that Mm -hmm. I want to work with, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So in terms of like the whole hemorrhaging conversation, like if we're looking for new clients, if I'm doing things I should be doing, I don't think you're going to show up in your full presence. But I think if you show up in your full presence, rooted in yeah. certainty of who I want to serve, knowing how I'm going to serve them. Like if you're saying like, when I'm with somebody solving their problem, I'm 200% confident. Can I bring that to my marketing? Show up in that way so that I have to do three videos a week instead of 30. And they're going to have so much more impact because my full presence is there versus I have to do 30 because somebody said I should do 30. So I'll do it because I don't really trust myself. Like if you can bring the trust yeah. and confidence and certainty of your client work into your into marketing, the marketing, I already know you know how to leverage. I know you know how to systematize. So I know you can do the work around how do I, like what number of times do I need to do that to get yeah. X number of conversations, to get X number yeah. of clients, then that I think is going to be a big like piece yeah. of your inconsistency yeah. puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. And that'll, that's, that's the communication part that I'm wondering, like, how do I communicate this? Yeah, bring in, that has to be my marketing. Yeah, so just it kind of comes down to like, just do you and don't worry about doing others, you know, like, right. it's just like, if right. you bring you to the table each time, like you do with your clients, mm-hmm. and a whole communication, but like, you, you know what you need to say. So it's Mm -hmm. just that you're not actually saying it and you're not creating Mm -hmm. the environment and structure Mm -hmm. in your operations to just do it consistently for the one person, again, Mm -hmm. getting us closer to what we want. Mm -hmm. I I think the rest takes care of itself Mm because you've gotten to this point already with this, right? Yeah, yeah. So for you, I think it really just comes down because like what we, in my program, I talk about focus a lot and the way that I define focus, it's like focus is saying no to everything that doesn't align with what I want. So if right now you have the clarity on what you want, you being focused means being ruthless about saying no to what doesn't align with that. So I want to have a peaceful move. I want to have consistent income so that I can do the move peacefully. Great. What does that mean? I've got, you know, three contracts that are going to be going out in the next 60 days. Great. Mm -hmm. If I want to maintain it, all I need to do is three new clients in the next 60 days. If it doesn't align with that, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to do about it. You know, like that's really what I think uh, it comes down for you. Yeah. Perfect. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Well, just to kind of then close this off, because I do have a hard stop today for this particular episode. What's your biggest takeaway from all of this? My biggest takeaway is to shift the things that I was looking at as going wrong and look at them as, as, you know, perfect accidents, happy accidents, (laughs) happy accidents instead. So I can smile about them instead of frown about them. Um, Also make sure that since I've made these decisions, that my focus, I got the clarity, make sure that my focus stays in place to get the outcomes that I want to see. 
make sure, you know, so I don't fall backwards into where I'm getting away from the focus component now. Got the clarity. Now it's about the focus. Yeah. And also um, to, in terms of the communication and the marketing, bring what I do organically into that and let that do the speaking. Love it. That I think uh, it, it is a recipe for success. So uh, kudos to you for, for, for getting you. there. All right, thank perfect. You. Well, thank you for, for being on and kind of navigating that whole like, you know, back and forth of, of where we kind of got to. So I appreciate you for being a good sport about that. So why don't you just close us off and let everybody know who's the best person to find you? Where can they find you? What's the best place to contact them? Like floor is mm -hmm. yours for all that good stuff. Okay. Well, I keep everything simple. Arnithaweb.com is my digital address. So you can always find anything that I'm doing at arnithaweb.com. Perfect. We'll include all that in the show notes. So Anita, thank you very much for being thank on. You. And thank uh, you. we'll see everybody else in the next one. Thank you.